Hello, this is Athena Lemon with the Wolbachia Project, and today you'll be watching me set up some gels in the lab. I start by putting on gloves and cleaning my lab bench. Then I go through the equipment and reagent checklist. I like to set up my casting tray first, and I check that there are clear plastic trays inserted into the casting mold, and I also decide how many wells I want in my gel. If you're using Mini 1, we recommend using the 9 well comb, which you can see in the casting setup. This comb will create the wells once the gel is set. Once I have everything I need, I prepare the buffer. This is the same buffer that's used to make the gel. In this case, I'm using Mini 1's system and gel cups, so I'm diluting the buffer they sent me. I peel off a little of the plastic off of the tops of the gel green gel cups from Mini 1 and microwave them for about 20 seconds, or until it's all melted and there are no lumps. I don't want to pour the molten agarose while it is still too hot, so I take the time and wait until the agarose cools down. It should be warm, but not hot. Then I pour the gel into the casting tray I've previously set up. It's really important the gel solidifies completely. With gels this small, it should only take about 10 minutes, so I'm taking the time to wait the entire 10 minutes to make sure that I have a well-set gel. In the meantime, I'm going to get the gel electrophoresis apparatus set up. I put this black piece of plastic into the viewing platform in the buffer tank. This makes it easier to see the gel while it's running. Then I drop the buffer tank into the carriage. If you inserted the viewing platform, that black piece of plastic, you should not be able to see the white sticker warning you not to pour the buffer into the black carriage. The buffer only goes into this clear buffer tank. While you're waiting for your gel to set, you can make sure you have everything else you need, including making sure your DNA ladder is thawed and mixed. Once your gel is firm to the touch, gently remove the comb from the gel. Unless you're careful, there's a chance you could tear the gel when you remove the comb. Then, put the gel into the buffer tank. With the Mini 1 system, there's only one way the gel goes in, and the combs should always be towards the top, negative end, of the carriage. Sometimes there's agarose that leaks around the clear plastic tray. This is totally normal, and you can see I just wipe it off with a paper towel before I add it to the buffer tank. This is what a properly set up Mini 1 buffer tank looks like. Add the buffer tank to the apparatus and lightly push it in to make contact with the rivets. Then, carefully and slowly add about 135 milliliters of buffer into the clear buffer tank with the gel. The buffer should never go into the black carriage. Once you're ready, move on to loading the gel. You can turn on the blue light to watch where you load your samples. Here, I'm starting by adding the ladder to the first well, then adding my samples. To load your samples, you want your pipette tip to hover right above the well. The colored loading dye on your samples has some glycerol, so it is denser than water and will fall down into the well. You can see I steady my pipette when I pipette samples into a gel. I add the orange photo hood on top of the entire apparatus and press the on button. I let my gel run for about 20 minutes and I occasionally check on it. I'm setting up both the arthropod and Wolbachia gel in parallel, so they will both be running at the same time. I take the time while my gels are running to clean up my station and equipment. After about 20 to 25 minutes, it's time to image the gel. I turn the blue light on and use my phone to take a picture through the photo hood. My results look great! I turn everything off and remove the buffer tank from the black carriage. I pick up the clear plastic tray with the gel on it and throw away the gel, but keep the plastic tray. Right now, I'm going over to the sink 
to dump out the buffer and rinse the buffer tank in the black viewing platform with DI water. Then I dry everything off and I leave it to dry on a paper towel. I finish cleaning up my bench and then I'm able to upload my gel results to the Wolbachia project database. When you've finished your lab, make sure that you upload the picture of your gel to your post on the database. And that helps other scientists see what you're seeing and make sure that your conclusions are correct and valid. Personally, I like to create a post at the beginning of the project and update it as I go through all of the steps. I'm going to record what equipment I used under the materials and methods section and add labeled pictures of my gels under results. Once I interpret my labeled gel, I'm able to determine if my arthropod had Wolbachia or not. Once I save this database post, other researchers and students across the globe will be able to refer to my data and my results. This is how we can communicate to the scientific community and discover unique results or broader trends in the Wolbachia symbiosis community. If you have already added to the database or are planning to, I would like to personally thank you for being a contributing scientist to the research we do.